Tom Penny is basically a mythical character in skateboarding. There are so many urban legends and stories about the crazy things that he's done, a lot of them actually being true, which we'll talk about. But Tom had one of the best skateboarding styles of all time of anyone who put wheels to pavement, and a lot of people actually consider him the best skateboarder in general of all time. So let's take a look at the career of Tom Penny. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, the channel where you can learn something new about skateboarding three times a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we take a look at something in the skateboarding world, from tricks to culture to your favorite skaters like Tom Penny. And Tom Penny is a religious or cult figure in skateboarding. You hear about the cult of Tom Penny, you hear about his legends, you hear stories about how he showed up at a park, did something incredible and unheard of, and then just faded away into the ether, never to be seen again. All kinds of really crazy things about Tom. And from his style to his demeanor, the way he held himself on a skateboard, he is absolutely a legendary skateboarder. And we should take a look at uh, his history and where he came from. Tom is from England and he started his career with the Radlands contest over there. Although he mostly grew up skating alone or with a small group of friends, his first few appearances were pretty heavily influenced by what was going on in skateboarding at the time. Like the tech stuff, the multiple flips and that kind of thing. But you can see a glimmer of what he would become. There's some style under there. And there's some switch and some nollie stuff which was still pretty new. In 1994, Tom got sixth place. But the following year in 1995, he actually got first place with a single run. There were all sorts of stories even from that where he showed up, did his one run, and left halfway through the comp. When he won, they had to call him to get his mum to bring him back to find out he'd won. Soon after that win, Tom moved to the US. His original UK sponsor, Deathbox, they had transformed into Flip and they had moved headquarters over the US and Tom went to join them over there. And he also got an Etnies where he got his first full length legitimate video part in High Five. Let's take a look at that. There's a few standout tricks in here like that switch frontside flip over the rail. Doing tricks over handrails was still new and switch frontside flips were pretty new too. This trick alone would have been an ender. Also, his switch flip was perfect. Not a lot of people could do them just as well as their regular ones, but Tom could. Or how about this? The kickflip back tail stall was sick enough, but how about this ultra casual frontside flip over the vert hip? A few years after that, when I was first starting skating, I saw that video part and I was not very impressed because it looked so easy. I couldn't even comprehend how hard that stuff was supposed to be because of the way that he does it so casually. But think about who has the best front side flips you can think of. Did you think of Andrew Reynolds? Because he went and he tried that same front side flip on the hip, and this is what he said. I went to Chicken's Bowl this one time to skate and just thought like, I wanna try and front side flip where he got that little hip, you know? He did the kickflip back tail and then he just went down and did that kickflip stuck to the wall over the hip. I figured I could front side flip in a quarter pipe, so I should be able to front side flip this little hip, right? I tried it and seriously, every time the thing would just shoot me out to the flat bottom, like completely out of control. There was just no way I could do it. After that, I was just like, I don't get it. He was just this delicate little thing, just stuck to that wall. Flat ground and vert are like the same thing to that dude. Look, we're 20 seconds into his video part and it's already legendary. But his actual ender is a switch frontside flip down this double set, which is pretty crazy because he did a regular frontside flip and that was good enough to make it into Trans World. He also switched frontside flipped Carlsbad, twice. The first time he went there alone, and the second time he actually had to bring a filmer to actually record it. He didn't even think of it at the time, which you'll find happened a lot over his career. Around that time, there was also an industry section in 411 issue 11. Tom only has a few tricks, but just watch this line. Every trick is perfect or better. His tricks that are a tiny bit sketchy are actually better looking than his perfect ones. Everything is super clean and just watch how he ends it. A lot of people probably could have done this line, but just look at the way he does it. The way that he just goes with the flow of the spot. He doesn't push, he doesn't do speed checks to try to get ready when it's time to hit that rail. He just kind of does it. He just goes with the flow. It looks like he just made up that line on the spot. And given the other things that I've read about him, it's possible that he did. But even if that one was planned, there are a lot of stories about him doing crazy stuff. Uh, there's this one from Trans World in 2007. There's no actual footage from this event though. Outside of his ridiculous footage during his early days in the States, one example of the types of urban myths Penny spawned was one that I happened to experience firsthand. In early 96, West LA's Hot Rod Skate Shop had rented a warehouse downtown, built a pretty decent mini ramp, and threw a party to inaugurate slash celebrate the whole thing. With jam-packed platforms and anywhere from two to four skaters dropping in at the same time, the session was extremely heated. 
With his trademark beanie pulled well below eye level, Penny embarked on his run-of-the-mill training destruction run, miraculously dodging the likes of Mike Carroll, SAD, and others as he casually cruised the ramp until he was alone. Pretty much at that very moment, every light in the warehouse blew a fuse and the entire party was left in pitch black. However, through the darkness, the discernible noise of Tom's trucks hitting the coping did not stop. For nearly a full minute, until someone found the fuse box by way of a lighter and some luck, Penny kept skating, either unaware or simply unaffected by the lack of vision on the ramp. Precisely as the lights came back up, a stunned crowd watched in disbelief as Tom was frozen mid frontside flip, floating over the ramp completely undaunted by either light or dark. Sixth sense indeed. Also in 1996, Tom appeared in Transworld's Uno video. He only has a few tricks at this bank spot, but even that is a crazy story. So if you want to see the whole video, watch Transworld's anthology. There is some music in the beginning, so I can't play it for you for copyright strike reasons, but I'll try to summarize it. So the team being Rob Dyrdek and some other skaters took him to this spot and it's a really crazy spot. It's really steep. Um, it's just the right length that it can shoot you right onto your face if you mess up. And they figured they'd get some basics out of him, his switch flip, his frontside flip and stuff like that. Um, but what actually happened was pretty ridiculous. So he did that basic stuff they were expecting, but he just didn't stop. He did a nollie backside flip going in blind and fakie. And after that, nobody else was skating because they were just watching this guy do whatever he wanted within a couple of tries. He does a bunch of stuff. And then he sealed the deal with a switch backside flip. Don't come back here. The bank is definitely closed. <laughs> it's over with. That was the final time I feel like anything was ever done there. I don't I can't even imagine like especially in Southern California like when one individual just shuts a spot down like I don't nobody goes there not even to this day like you can't go there because you know like no matter it doesn't matter what you do like it just will never compare to the one man destruction session that he just put down and like blessed skateboarding with. Absolutely crazy, but also in 1996, Tom got his first Transworld cover doing this front blunt, and it's completely unbelievable because he didn't actually land it. Uh, kind of weird. These days you would never consider publishing a trick that wasn't landed, but apparently that's what happened. But Tom was always super casual. If he was trying the trick and just didn't feel it, then he would have walked away and not even bothered with it. I found a ton of stories about just how ridiculously casual he was, like this one from Chad Muska. That was pretty much the craziest part of it all. It was almost like he didn't know he was doing anything special. None of it was conscious. Nothing he's done has been conscious. It's just all natural. His whole life is like that. Anywhere you went, he would just bust something. No cameras, nothing. None of it was ever planned in any way. It was never like, I'm gonna do this and I'll get this cover and be a superstar. It was just, oh, there's an obstacle in front of me and I wanna do this down it. Boom, I'm just doing it. Tom was one of the biggest skaters in the world in 1996, and then he suddenly just disappeared. And even his disappearance was casual. I remember even when I first started skating a few years later, I started in 2001, there were always these stories about Tom's sightings. People would see him somewhere. He showed up at my skate park and did a giant nollie flip and then he's gone. There would be ads published of him where he would be doing a trick and he would just say somewhere in Europe. You wouldn't know where and you wouldn't know when it was shot or anything like that. He was completely gone from the public eye and even his sponsors had a hard time tracking him down like Soltech. They wanted to give him a pro shoe and they kept asking him what he wanted his pro model to look like and he just never got back to him. Apparently he had been skating around Europe in Timbaland boots for a year, the same pair of boots. And so they kept asking him, what do you want your shoe to be like over and over? And he eventually just sent them the boot so that they could do some sketches based on it. And they got it and it wasn't actually a Timbaland boot. That's kind of the uh, urban legend version of the story. It was actually a Columbia hiking boot. But still, either way, this dude had a shoe sponsor, he had enough money to buy skate shoes, and yet he was just skating around in hiking boots. You know, it just didn't matter to him. Um, something else that didn't matter to him, I found this story where he lived in Europe, and he in France, I believe, and he was right next to a filmer. And they lived right next to each other, and they also lived by this park where there was a bunch of cool stuff to skate. Um, sometimes he would call up the filmer and they would go do stuff. Sometimes he wouldn't even bother. So one day he went there, he found the biggest gap that was in the whole park and he kick flipped it and he didn't bother to call the guy. It just didn't matter to him. But why did Tom actually leave? There was always a lot of talk about how he wasn't happy with the skateboarding industry or how things were going in the US and stuff like that. But here's a quote from Tom himself. 
I never really made any decision to leave the States or the spotlight. Right before I left, I was living with Sean Sheffy for a couple of weeks and he was like, you're not coming back. I was like, yeah, I am. I'll be back in two weeks. I'm just going to the contest and then I'm coming back. He was like, no, you're not coming back. I went to all the Euro contests and just ended up in London. I saw all my old friends again and ended up staying there for a while. It just happened. Of course, he just kind of wandered over there and it just kind of happened. Uh, completely ridiculous. But there's a ton of really crazy things that happened while he was over there in Europe. For example, he shot this ad in 1998, although the ad ran in 2000. He's doing an Indy 540 on vert. Tom had skated pools and a lot of transition and stuff like that, but he was never known as a vert skater. And yet here he is doing a legitimate Indy 540 with a legitimate amount of vert skater level air. Completely crazy. And even more crazy is the fact that he had never tried a 540 before. He just kind of got the idea and did it. And he never bothered to call up a filmer, even though he was filming for Menik Mati at the time. And he actually made it pretty tough on himself. He said, I would drink a beer between every try. I think I drank something like 18 Elephant Tallboy Carlsberg beers before I finally landed it. I manual rolled the flat bottom and manual rolled up the other side. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, there was a lot of drug and alcohol use around this time too, but he says he cleaned his life up around 2003. But here's another crazy story from the time in France. This is that same park I was talking about earlier. He does a 5-0 backside shove it out. It's basically like a one set, like a stair height. I could probably do that trick at that spot. Just picture how that would look if you or I did that. Okay, but now this is Tom doing it. Transworld wrote a whole article about the invisible shove it. It kind of looks like he does a 5-0 and he's gonna go to tail side, but then he just doesn't. His feet never look like they leave the board, but somehow it ends up rolling away backwards. It's completely crazy. Um, that was just his style though. It was just so fluid and natural that you could barely even see when things happened. Um, here's another crazy one. This is a 360 flip to fakie that he did in Copenhagen. Here's the story. There were not many tries, only a few as I remember it. The guy is such a natural, it's insane. That Roland he's skating is no joke. It's a gnarly place to do those tricks, and the way he did them, it was hard to comprehend. I'm not sure he even noticed Jesper shooting. Jesper got two great photos, the 360 flip for the S ad, and a frontside flip that I don't remember if it showed up somewhere. As far as I remember, he made a couple of them, the 360 flips, maybe two or three. There's actually a rumor that he was really upset when he saw that ad because he was there shooting the frontside flip for TSA and that 360 flip was just poached. Like he wasn't planning on using it for anything, um, but that's completely ridiculous. Like he was just doing those anyway. He didn't care if it was documented and someone just happened to take a picture and shoot an iconic ad. That's completely amazing. But his skating, it really makes me think of how I skated back in the day. You know, I was the complete opposite. I was always trying to film for video parts I wasn't on any kind of pro videos, I was just shooting for YouTube, but every time I went out, I would always push myself a lot further than what I could do. And I would just get more and more angry just trying to force this trick that I just couldn't do. And I would finally land it really, really sketchy, and that would be good enough, and I would just go home angry. But that's not what Tom was like. You know, he would just do, he was skating at video part quality all the time, uh, completely crazy. So after all that time in Europe, he came back and he shot for Menik Mati, one of my favorite videos ever made. He was also in Sorry, Really Sorry, and Extremely Sorry. He moved back to the US with a permanent residence visa in 2006. And the parts that he put together during this time were amazing, as were his board sales. This Cheech and Chong graphic sold like crazy, and Flip ended up having to pay Cheech royalties when he found out about it. Jeff Rowley said it was one of their best-selling boards for 13 years, as of 2009, but it's actually been re-released more since then. After a few years in the US, it seems like he ended up back in Europe. You start to see his footage and pictures coming from over there. In 2015, Lucy and Clark mentioned in an interview that Penny isn't allowed in the US anymore. I don't know the story there. Maybe his visa got revoked or something. I'm not really too sure. But in 2014, he was in a UK video called Albion. It was shot on a VX, but it's actually pretty new. He's 37 here, and it looks a lot like his signature style has kind of faded away over time. Although because of his cult-like status, you'll see people arguing in the comments that this is the best skateboarding has ever looked in all history. I'll let you decide for yourself. Last year, he filmed some stuff in Chile. You never really know where he's gonna turn up. And it looks like he's still rocking boot-style skate shoes. His supermodel, which is called the Bandit, looks like this. He also had a small section in the super video Oscar and Friends. At this point, it's more about cameos than full-on video parts. 
And a couple of months ago, he shot this ETN ad in Copenhagen. Maybe he's staying there now. I don't know. Um, he's 40 years old now, and whether he comes back to the U.S. or if he ever cares to come back to the U.S., time will tell. But that is what I was able to find about Tom Penny. Share your favorite Tom Penny stories below. I know there's a lot more. I wasn't able to cover all the ones that I found. But in the meantime, until my next video, here are a couple more videos you can check out. There's also a big logo right in the middle of the screen that you can tap to subscribe. And that way you can keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.